Hey guys, Angry Beast here, bringing you some uh, kill confirmed gameplay on the map mission. And the first thing I want to put out of the way right now is this is not my gameplay. This is an extremely impressive gameplay, but it is not mine. It is uh, by a person who goes by the name of Unstable Frog. And he sent me this video to do a commentary over, so I'm doing a commentary over. It ends up being a double Moab and a kill confirmed, and they win the game. He's using MP7 here with rapid fire and silencer, and the first thing I want to touch on is his class setup. Now, if you didn't know, MP7, the MP7 is the worst submachine gun to put rapid fire on it. A lot of people think that it's the most effective attachment, but really it ends up being the placebo effect. Because with all other submachine guns, rapid fire increases rate of fire by about 25-30%. to 30%. But on the MP7, it actually only increases rate of fire by about 10%. So you're not getting anywhere close to the lethality you get by putting rapid fire on a PM9 or a PP90. So overall, I'd recommend using range or even uh, or even a uh, extended mags over kick. But the silencer is definitely one of the strongest attachments you can use to this weapon because it has such low recoil. Even at a medium to long range, you're not losing much by having the silencer on there. It reminds me a lot of the the ACR from Modern Warfare 2 because of how low his recoil is. But uh, the rest of his class setup, I believe he's using sleight of hand, hard line, and either steady aim or dead silence. Not quite sure there. And his kill streaks are the specialist package. Obviously, he's using assassin, quick draw, and scavenger pro. And his secondaries are the Akimbo FMG nines. But uh, to be perfectly honest. I have no problem with these weapons. They've patched them so much, they're just a shadow of what they used to be. So in my opinion, the Akimbo FMGs are not that big of a deal anymore. I mean, you'll see later on in this game, it takes them over 60 rounds to kill out to medium range. And yeah, they have a good rate of fire, and they got a good damage per second. But that means nothing if you have no accuracy, in my opinion. I think he's using the concussion grenades and the Semtex. The concussion grenades are... are Okay, in my opinion, they're not on the level they were in like Black Ops or whatnot. I probably would have used a portable radar. But when you consider how he's playing, he moves around the map very, very interesting. This uh, reminds me of how I like to play, except he's much more successful at it than I am. I don't know if he's talking to a teammate here to help point out any locations or whatnot, but he definitely knows how to move around, maneuver around the map very, very effectively. And he likes to rush, and, and that's one of the things that makes him more very interesting. This, the two Moabs in this game are quite long. The first one's about five and a half minutes, and the second one's about four minutes. So, you know, that's a little bit long for a Moab. But as far as the entertainment goes, I found this Moab to be very, very enta entertaining to watch. Because he never stays still. He's never really sitting in a corner waiting for them to come to, come to him. He's always moving and get it, taking the initiative. But the concussions in the Sentex are definitely toned down from what they were in Modern Warfare 2 or Black Ops. And because you can't really resupply him with Scavenger, I don't see too much of a reason to use him in this game over something like the Portable Radar or the Throwing Knives, but they definitely have their place. They're extremely effective against people using Dead Man's Hand or Last Stand, which he does run into a couple times. In fact, uh, his last death in the game is due to Dead Man's Hand, which is kind of frustrating, but... Uh, at this point, I think he's something like 20 into the Moab streak or something close to that. And, uh, you know, if you notice, he changes his playstyle a little bit. He's going for the longer range shots with a submachine gun, and generally that's a bad idea. But when you're using a gun with such low recoil and such high accuracy as the MP7, it really doesn't make too big of a difference if he's going for the close or the long range shots. And that's what I like about the MP7. In a lot of ways, it reminds me of the UMP45 from Modern Warfare 2. Um, with a little bit less recoil and a little bit less damage over range. And I think that's one of the reasons why many people consider it to be one of the best submachine guns in the game. I know personally this is one of my favorite weapons in the game. I don't use it too often, just simply because it's a late prestige unlock and I'm in the middle of ranking up other weapons like the L86. But uh, the silencer on it is extremely effective. Because they increase the power of silencers in this game, they used to decrease half your range, but now they only decrease it by 25%. It's very, very effective to use a silencer on a gun like the MP7, uh, so that you have even more effectiveness at longer range, because they won't know exactly where you're shooting from, as well as you will be able to still do pretty good damage over range. And when you have the specialist bonus, uh, it doesn't really matter if you have the silencer here because the range proficiency cancels out the silencer. Kind of like how the, how the, re uh, shoot, what was that? The, the kick proficiency cancels out rapid fire. It, it works in pretty much the same way. But, uh, one thing I have taken away from this gameplay though is how to navigate the map and still be a, a safe, 
a safe navigation route. I don't, I don't know exactly how to word that. But if you notice, he's using cover all the time. He's never without something between him and his foe. There's always something between the line of sight of him and his foe, and he always has the position of advantage. How, how he does this, I'm not quite sure. He just has an amazing feel for the game, is what I can, is what I take away from this. He calls in his first Moab there, and that alone is impressive to me. I have yet to get a Moab in this game, and the fact that he got two in one game is absolutely crazy. I know a lot of people consider the MP7 to be overpowered, but in my opinion, it's just a good weapon for accuracy. I mean, it's not as powerful at close range as even the UMP45, because it has such a low rate of fire, it just benefits from its high accuracy. Uh, now, he's, if you didn't know, you actually have to die to get a second Moab in one life if you're not using the hardline glitch, which he's not in this game. So, he ends up dying there after getting a triple spray with his FMG9s, and one thing I want to know is how did those people right there miss him? I mean, he's already passed them, and he ran straight through their line of sight, and he didn't get shot. I don't know if he's playing against some of the worst players in the game right now, but I want to know how I can get matched up against some of these guys, because these guys are absolutely horrible that he's played against. <laughs> but, uh, it's a very impressive gameplay nonetheless. And, uh, you know, one thing I really do like about this gameplay is how he knows in, in situations what weapon to use. You know, he pulls out his FMG9s in close quarters, and usually I would consider that to be a bad move. Swapping weapons can usually get you killed, but because he is running sleight of hand, it doesn't make too big of a difference that he is using the FMG 9s in close quarters because they do have a long swap time but if you're using sleight of hand and you know there's gonna be an enemy there that's always a good choice and this gameplay really imp impressed upon me how how you can do well if you have good situational awareness even without the use of radar or or the use of a uh, heartbeat sensor it he, he knows where the enemies are at all times and that's something that takes a lot of skill to do I a lot of that though, does probably come from the fact that he has dead silence and sit rep at the same time. I'm assuming this guy has a headset on, but I can't be sure. And he does have one teammate in the game with him, as far as I know. He's probably just spotting because he ends up doing pretty bad at the end of the game, his teammate. But uh, he also does play the objective occasionally, but he doesn't pick up too many tags in this game. If there's one thing I take away from that is that he's not the super, super objective player, but that's okay. I mean, it's a double Moab. He does end up winning the game. But I want to talk about how the MP7 compares to some of the other submachine guns. Let's start with the first gun you unlock, the MP5. In pretty much all categories, the MP7 is better than the MP5. MP7 does have a little bit less damage up close. It has uh, more damage at range, as far as an less damage at range, sorry. But has a faster rate of fire and higher accuracy. So in my opinion, the MP7 beats out the MP5 in all situations. The bullets to kill are pretty much the same, but... The actual damage of the bullets is a little bit lower, so you're not benef benefiting from headshots as much. Now, when you compare it to a gun like the UMP-45, that's where things start to get interesting. The UMP-45 and this weapon share a lot in common. The UMP does a little bit more damage for a little bit higher rate of f for a little bit lower rate of fire, but what it does have is a little bit better range and uh, a little bit better penetration. If you can manage to use the UMP-45 then you could probably have a lot of success with this weapon. I haven't seen a single person with it who who does absolutely terrible with this weapon, and they're good with other weapons. Because this weapon has such low recoil, it makes it very, very friendly to new players. And because it is such a late prestige unlock, I feel like it's not given due justice in multiplayer. But because they added the prestige token ability in Modern Warfare 3, I do find that it's used a little bit more than what I originally expected in the game, from what the original tweets about this weapon were. This gameplay is winding down. There's about a minute left. He's like one or two off the Moab. And, uh, you know, for his perks and whatnot, I, I understand where he's going running higher line. But in my opinion, the benefits of higher line do not uh, outweigh the cons from it. Because you're giving up your second tier perk slot, which could be better used in something like quick draw or even overkill. I don't know if it's such a wise idea to use higher line with specialist. Yes, you'd have the ability to get assists with... Uh, assist for kills, but that really doesn't make too big a difference unless you're running Recon Pro with it, which obviously is not. Nobody runs Recon in this game, but his gameplay is winding down. He calls in his second Moab, and there's just a couple seconds left in the game. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this guy's an amazing player, and uh, I'll leave his link to his channel in the description. I'm not quite sure if he uploads any regular footage, but I was definitely impressed with the quality of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to leave you with the rest of this gameplay. I'm Angry Beast, and I'm signing out.